All right, this book is called Sequoia and the Written Word, and it's by Kelly Rogers. Here's our title page, Sequoia and the Written Word. Again, by Kelly Rogers. If you remember some of our nonfiction text features we see here, we have a table of contents, a changing world, young sequoia. This gives me an idea of what I'm going to be reading about and learning about. A letter home, teach me, forced out, honoring sequoia, try it, glossary, going to tell me definitions of words, index, where I can find specific words, and then your turn. Remember, this is called a heading. A changing world. It was the early 1800s. Georgia was changing quickly. New settlers were pouring in. Look, they're settlers. It's in bold letters. Tells me it's probably going to be in the glossary. Some wanted land. Others were searching for gold. But there was another group of people there, too. They were not new. This group had been living there a long time. They were worried about their future. These people were called the Cherokee. This is also a text feature, Cherokee. It helps you to be able to pronounce the word. The Cherokee had their own culture. Again, another bold word. We're probably going to find the definition of that in the glossary. They live by their own rules. They spoke their own language. They had unique pronunciation key to help you pronounce it, unique beliefs and customs. Their way of life was very different from how the settlers lived. The Cherokee did not want this to change. So here we go. This is an illustration. Here, this looks like a photograph. And it says, finger weaving is a cultural tradition that is still done today. I think this is probably a more recent picture because back then they did not have cameras. A Cherokee man had a plan. His name was Sequoia. So if you did not know how to pronounce his name, Sequoia. He wanted to help his people. He wanted them to move into the modern world. But he also tried to help preserve their culture. Dark word, or bold print word, probably going to be in the glossary. He thought his people could do both. They just had to learn some new skills. He wanted to teach his people to read and write. But he wanted them to do it in their own language. He would create the written language himself. Some thought this was a good idea. Others thought Sequoia was being foolish. Down here, if you didn't know who he was or what he looked like, it's got the label with his picture, a drawing there, not a photograph. Then we have our text box here. Don't forget, long ago the Cherokee did not have a written language. They told stories over and over so that the stories would live on. Cherokee culture has stayed strong over the years and includes art, clothing, and music. This is probably a more recent picture, not the time we're talking about in history, where they're making things out of clay, it looks like. Here's some other, probably clothing or tools or something like that. And these look like instruments, almost like drums. Now, this is not the real house because I can tell by the caption up here, it says this is a recreated Cherokee summer house. So they probably had a house for the summer and they had a house for the winter. Young Sequoia. We do not know much about the young Sequoia. Many say he was born around 1770. He lived in a Cherokee village. It is said to have been in what is now Tennessee pronunciation key, Tennessee. 
His mother was Cherokee. There are different ideas about his father. Some say his father was white. He may have been in the army. Others say he was half white and half Cherokee. He may have been a fur trader. No one knows for sure. The records are not clear. But we do know that Sequoia was raised as a Cherokee. So here we have the picture down here. These are American Indian fur traders in this drawing. So they're trading fur for things that they need. They didn't use money. It's called barter. Now they're heading a letter home. In 1812, a war broke out. Sequoia became a soldier. He fought for the United States. During the war, he saw other men writing letters home. He wished he could write letters too, but he did not know English. He also saw that the white men could read military orders. Military is the Army, Navy, Air Force. He could not do this, nor could the other Cherokee men. He knew his world was changing. He wanted to help his people. He kept working on his new system. So down here, some letters. A soldier sent this letter home during the war. Here we've got another picture over here with the text box, War of 1812. The War of 1812 was fought between the United States and Great Britain. It was about shipping and trade on the seas. Sorry, I'm just trying to focus this. There we go. Another heading, Teach Me. After the war, Sequoia returned home. He continued to work on the system. He drew symbols. Each one stood for a sound. These symbols made sense to Sequoia, but would they make sense to others? Sequoia needed someone else to learn the meanings of the symbols. This was the only way he could be sure that his writing system worked. He wondered who would be willing to learn his new language. Then, one day, his daughter came to him. Her name was Ioka. Ioka. She asked him to explain the strange drawings he had made. So here's some of what he did. Here we've got another picture, drawing, family man, and a text box. Sequoia married a Cherokee woman in 1815. Her name was Sally Binge. Sally was a, and I've got to look back, Ioka's mother. I forgot there for a minute how to pronounce her name. Sequoia made up a game. He used the game to teach the symbols to Okaya. He explained each symbol. She understood most of them, but she had some questions too. Some of the symbols were confusing. The father and daughter began to work together as a team. They worked hard. They improved the written language, but there was a problem. Some people thought Sequoia's writing was witchcraft. Others said it did not work. Sequoia had to prove that the symbols could be read. He thought of a clever way to do this. Down at the bottom, this letter was written by Sequoia's cousin with the Cherokee symbols and was sent to Cherokee chief John Ross in 1838. And here we have the Cherokee alphabet. Move this down a little bit. Looks very different from ours, right? Sequoia went to a meeting. He took Ioka with him, but she stayed outside. He asked the meeting's leaders to tell him a few words. He wrote them down using his symbols. Then the note was taken outside to Okaya. 
she was able to read what they had said inside. The plan had worked. Sequoia used this meeting to improve the system even more. He stopped making symbols for words. He made them for sounds instead. After 12 years of working on the system, there were 86 symbols. He had done it. He had created a written language. Fed up. It wasn't easy for Sequoia to create the symbols. Once his wife wanted him to stop working, she threw his papers in the fire. He lost two years worth of work and he had to start all over. There's his alphabet. There he is sitting with the other men. Sequoia taught the written language to others. He felt this was a big step for his people. Soon many of them could read and write. They were now the first American Indians to have a written language. Things began to change. The tribe wrote their laws. They made a constitution. Again, bold too, so it's probably going to be in the glossary. They kept records. They translated books. Translated. Dark too. They even had their own newspaper. There's the Cherokee Constitution. Here's the Cherokee newspaper. The Cherokee newspaper is called the Cherokee Phoenix. Phoenix. You can read the modern day version on the internet. This one. So in the past and now. The written language gave the Cherokee a new way of life. It was special. It belonged to them. Now they could write their thoughts. They could share ideas. They could express their feelings on paper. They re could record their past. History would not be forgotten. There's Cherokee Central Schools. This is a school sign. Sequoia felt his written language was special for other reasons, too. He thought it would show that his people were making progress. They were moving forward. He hoped this would earn them respect from the U.S. government. Government. Sadly, it did not. These were their street signs. Here's a text box. Cherokee writing today. Today, Sequoia symbols can be seen in many places. They are on street signs and schools. They are used to write songs and letters. They are used to communicate in many ways. Force out. In 1838, the U.S. government forced the Cherokee off their lands. The government made them move west to Oklahoma. At that time, it was called Indian Territory. They did not want to go, but they had no choice. The Cherokee did not get to pack their things. They were forced to walk thousands of miles. It took months. Troops treated them badly on the march. Many people got sick along the way. More than 5,000 died. The long walk came to be known as the Trail of Tears. Here's a picture of them on the Trail of Tears. There's a map, and it says in this text box, A Nation Within a Nation. In 1794, the Cherokee Nation was formed. It is a nation within the United States. Its citizens are proud of their culture and history. Honoring Sequoia. Sequoia lived a unique life. His world changed quickly. He tried to change with it. He also tried to help his people. He gave them a special gift. It was a gift of writing. That gift helped the Cherokee preserve their past. Today, Sequoia is thought of as a hero. 
His name is honored in many places. Mount Sequoia in the Great Smoky Mountains is named after him. Several schools share his name. Sequoia was a special man. He lives on in the hearts and minds of people everywhere. I apologize that that's so blurry. Okay, so here's a stamp. And you may not, that's a little bit better, isn't it now? In 1980, Sequoia was honored with the postage stamp. Here's the Great Smoky Mountains. And here's the trail on Mount Sequoia. Okay. We're going to skip the try it. We're going to look at our glossary. Okay. A blacksmith is a person who makes or repairs things made of iron. Communicated. To have given information about something to someone else. Constitution. A system of beliefs and laws by which a country is governed. Culture. The beliefs and ways of a group of people. Customs. Traditional behaviors or actions of a group of people. Military. Relating to soldiers and the armed forces. Preserve to keep something safe and in good condition. Settlers, people who go to live in a new place where there are few other people. Translated, change from one language to another. Okay, there's your glossary with your words and definitions of bold words. Index, you could find, let's see, we wanted to find who John Russ was. They do it. By their last name first, so Ross, John, and I would go to page 16. Or let's see where I wanted to look at being a blacksmith again. It tells me what pages to go to. That's the purpose of the index. I hope you enjoyed the book.